Our first guest knows a little something about the power of young people. A former president of the NAACP, Reverend Cornell Brooks is the director of the Collaborative for Social Justice at the Harvard Kennedy School after decades of empowering thousands of young activists to fight for equality and equity. Please join me in warmly welcoming a longtime friend of the Jewish community, Reverend Cornell Brooks. Good morning. Now, if you're happy to be here, excited about being here, I want to say good morning again, and I want you to say it loud enough for everyone across the country and around the world to hear it. Good morning. Good morning. I know I'm in the right place. It is a delight and an honor to be back at this convening four years later. You, as students, as Jewish youth leaders from over 45 countries around the world, have come to this assembly at an important hour. This is not only a great gathering of Jewish leaders, it occurs during African American History Month in this country. And so we are mindful that you, as leaders, have come to Dallas at an important hour. All across this country and around the world, there are those who would pit African Americans and Jews against one another. There are those who would pit Gentiles and Jews, Protestants and Catholics, Asians and Latinos, blacks and whites against one another. And it is in this hour that history is literally calling on every student, every boy, every girl, every young man, every young woman, every person in this room to stand and stand and stand against hate. Day in and day out. Only a few years ago, in Charlottesville, Virginia, anti-Semites, racists, white nationalists, white supremacists, neo-Nazis marched through the streets chanting, they, meaning blacks, will not replace us, chanting, Jews will not replace us. But I'm here to say that the coalition between African Americans and Jews is not dead. It is alive, it is strong, it is vigorous, and we stand and stand and stand together. Let's be clear. This is a moment in history where you're being called upon to lead. This is not ancient history. It is not merely biblical history. It's Twitter history, it's Instagram history, it's social media history, and it is history that you are writing right now. Tomorrow happens here. When we look across the globe and we see wildfires consuming Australia and New Zealand, when we see God's creatures panting for water, we appreciate the fact that we are in the midst of a climate crisis. And we cannot rely 
on some older generation somewhere, someplace else to do the work that has been given to you. Be clear, the leaders that we need are in this room. It's a moment in our history where we certainly see all across the length and breadth of this country the right to vote being suppressed, being diluted, being denied. The right to vote, not merely your grandparents' voter suppression, not merely black and white voter suppression, not merely the voter suppression of the 1960s and the 1970s. This is not merely black, white voter suppression. This is youth voter suppression. When they deny the right to vote to high school students and college students, it's time for this generation to say, our parents didn't allow you to suppress their votes. We will not allow you to suppress our votes. We will march, we will demonstrate, we will protest, we will stand up for the right to vote. As activists, you've seen on social media black and brown bodies brutalized in New York City, in Los Angeles, in Charleston, in Detroit, in cities all across this country and even around the world. We have seen police departments declare that black lives don't matter. But here's what I've seen. On the forefront of every criminal justice protest, demonstration, and march, here's what I've seen. I've seen Jewish students way beyond their numbers, not in the back of the crowd, not in the back of the march, not at the back of the demonstration, but out front leading and standing up and standing for social justice. Somebody's saying, well, what does that have to do with me? Since many of you have gone through bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, you'll appreciate that in the book of Isaiah, the prophet was asked a question, who will go for us? Whom will we send? And the prophet responds, here am I, send me. So I'm looking across this room and I'm asking the question, who will go for us? When anti-Semites and racists take the lives of Jews in Poe, in Tree of Life, in Monzi, I ask the question, who will stand against anti-Semitism? Who will stand against racism? Who will go for us? Is there somebody who will say, here am I, send me? Is there someone in this room, your high school freshman, your high school sophomore, a junior or a senior, and maybe you don't think you're qualified, you don't, you don't think you're prepared yet. I'm reminded of a 17-year-old young man, a junior in high school, who wrote, who wrote a letter to a 30-year-old man. And he wrote letter after letter after letter to this 30-year-old leader asking for permission to leave. Well, that young man, his name was John. He wrote to a preacher named Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King made time for that high school junior. And that young man, John Lewis, went to lead the civil rights movement. John Lewis, a young man. John Lewis, a student. John Lewis stood at the March on Washington. John Lewis is now an elder statesman. Can I tell you, there's a John Lewis in this room. There's a Rosa Parks in this room. There's an Abraham Joshua Heschel in this room. So I'm simply asking the question, who will go for us? If there's somebody here who's willing to be a prophet in our times, I want you to stand on your feet right now, and I want you to say, here am I. Somebody say, here am I. Say, here am I. Send me.
Hear my. Hear my. Send me. In the name of every Jewish prophet who's given his or her life for the cause of justice, I want somebody to say, Amen. God bless you.